Well, let's explore a different angle on this story. Daniel Tish is with Argyle Communications, joins us from Toronto. And, and Daniel, we're in the, you know, the, sort of the high point of the heat and light on this story. So much attention, so much emotion. But two or three years down the road, and a lot of people have asked me this question, now, given your expertise in, in public relations, do you think Jean Comeshi could get back on the air at some station or some network in Canada? Mm. Well, Ian, I, I, I got to say, I think that's pretty unlikely. Um, having said that, it's speculative, it's in the future, and I think it depends on a few things. In situations like this, you often have to look at the nature of the transgression. Um, at one end, you've got Brian Williams, for instance, uh, in, uh, of NBC, who exaggerated his exploits. That was pretty forgivable. Um, sexual violence, uh, that's pretty hard to forgive, uh, whether it's, uh, it meets the test of criminality or not. It's, pre it's, it's pretty serious. But I think a lot of it depends on what he does with himself from here. Does he, uh, the, the, to what extent does he apologize? How does he apologize? Is it a, a terse statement of regret in a courtroom written by a lawyer? Or is it authentic and transparent and accountable? And does he go beyond words to actual deeds? Finally, what sort of position is he looking for? Um, if he's looking for a career as an artist or, or, or musician, as he was once before, that might meet a different test in the public mind versus a position of trust like a broadcaster. We know the court of public opinion is not like a criminal court, but, you know, he has been acquitted of all the charges, or at least not convicted of any charges. From, from an image rehabilitation standpoint, in terms of, for him in Canada, does the fact that he was not convicted not matter? I think it. I think it does matter. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, being convicted would be far worse. But the reality is, the, whether, again, whether it's real or per, or widely perceived, he he has uh, he has acknowledged at the very minimum to do things that were sexually inappropriate. I think those are his words today. Um, and there's certainly a sense that his behavior probably went far further than than simply being inappropriate. Um, so very serious uh, behavioral issues, and I just don't see Canadians, uh, women and men alike, forgiving him for this and restoring him to a position of trust. And, and we have less than a minute, but let me ask you this. What about south of the border? What about the United States two, three years down the road? Is, is that a potential place where he could get back on the air, do you think? It's possible. Uh, you know, you never, you never want to say never. Certainly somewhere where he has a clean slate and isn't famous. In Toronto, he, he couldn't walk down the street without being known. In the States, it would be quite a different story. But again, I think, you know, we look at a, uh, at, at a Roman Polanski or, or a, a Kobe Bryant, uh, they, they are more likely, pe people are more likely to look past their misdemeanors and look at their art or their athleticism. It's not the case for a broadcaster, so it, it really depends what sort of position Mr. Gomeshi wishes to pursue in the future. Daniel Tish, really nice uh, having your insight this evening. Thank you. My pleasure.